Hey folks, welcome back to the Off Grid Workshop. My name is Nigel. Uh, we've got a pretty cool van in today doing an install. We're going to be putting in lithium, a DC to DC charger, and a new solar charge controller, and the van bits uh, battery master, which we've just recently stocked in our shop. And uh, we've been doing some installs as well. So I'm going to take you along on this install and just show you what we are dealing with. So here's the current setup it's a CBE split charge uh, van system with an MPPT, uh, obviously the 240 volt, 230 volt consumer unit and the uh, EHU charger and this big old uh, battery here. And uh, so we're gonna be replacing this with one of our 280 amp hour batteries. We're gonna be putting in a DC to DC charger here somewhere. And we're also gonna be replacing the uh, solar regulator with a Victron uh, MPPT charge controller so I'm gonna have to change some of the wiring in here run a new line from the engine to here for the DC to DC and uh, just pull out some of the old wiring as well so yeah I've got a bit to do on this but I'm gonna get cracking so we have run the wires for the DC to DC all the way along here behind the heat shrink there's already some wires that were on this uh, going over the top of the heat shrink we put our wires into this conduit and then it's going to go up the fl up through a grommet there where there's some additional wiring and stuff going through in this van uh, up through into the back there all right got all the wiring here tidied up and cable tied going up into the grommet there so it's looking pretty good gonna get it off the lift now and connect up everything inside and back in the workshop to crack on with the rest of it now all right we are connected wire runs all the way to the back comes up here to a fuse and onto the engine battery so this is uh, what we've done here so put our 280 amp hour off-grid battery in here lithium we've installed a blue smart charger by Victron so that's for the electric hookup going through a fuse got the Orion DC to DC charger so we've wired that with a new wire coming from the engine and that's going through a fuse there between the charger and the, and the battery and then there's another fuse on the engine battery. Then we have solar coming in here to circuit breaker, out of the circuit breaker into the MPPT charge controller there, out of that, through that fuse and then onto the battery. And uh, last thing also, we have the battery master which we've wired uh, onto some wires directly to the engine battery. And then the wires for the leisure battery from the battery master are onto the negative and the positive terminal inside the CBE here. One of the things that occurred to me just after the van had left our workshop here is that I didn't actually explain the CBE electro block or split charge system or whatever you call that, that thing. Um, and kind of the approach that we take to uh, installing lithium and upgrading. So obviously a lot of these uh, vans and motorhomes and stuff, when you buy them, if they have uh, the CBE or the equivalent uh, systems in their sergeant or whatever, uh, usually they're all very integrated. So for example, the charger that was in this van uh, was had obviously the positive and negative wires going that would actually charge the leisure battery but it also had a signal wire that went to the CBE system and that was literally just to notify you on the display unit that the battery was charging and uh, so there's all of these different things um, and obviously within that split charge system uh, historically you would have a line coming from your engine battery to that system and then that system would then do the split charge functionality so that you don't drain your engine battery from your leisure in the back and obviously when you upgrade to lithium you can't just rely on that connection or you shouldn't really just rely on the connection from the engine battery to charge your lith lithium battery although for in most cases that's fine it's perfectly safe to do so you're just not going to get the best performance so for example you are not going to uh, charge your battery fully and uh, it'll won't necessarily charge as fast as it could and all sorts of other factors but um for best performance uh, it's definitely recommended to put in a dc to dc charger and it also adds an element of being safer because it regulates how much you draw from your alternator and uh, puts out the correct amperage for your lithium battery and all those different things 
So uh, with that in mind, I'm going to put up a picture here of the uh, CBE system. I'm going to zoom in on it just so that you can actually see what's happening. But essentially, and I'm going to put circles around them, but you've got B1, which is for your engine battery. So that's the connection from the electro block from the CBE unit to your engine battery. You've got B2, which is your positive for your leisure battery. And then you've got your negative which is a common ground, same as most chargers and things like that. So it's very common uh, throughout Europe and the UK to use the chassis as the common ground on these uh, systems. So uh, what we do, generally speaking, is um, sometimes we'll connect the, the Victor and chargers directly to the battery because it doesn't make sense to put, use that system as a bus bar. Uh, in other cases, if we actually put a bus bar in, then obviously we use that. Um, and rarely will we actually connect the charger directly to the CBE unit uh, onto the B2 plus and the common ground. Uh, but one of the things that you are going to need to do if you are upgrading to lithium, is that the B1, uh, battery one positive, needs to, there's two ways to approach it. So with this fan, it was very easy because literally the only wire that came to the B1 positive on the CBE unit was just the line from the engine uh, to charge the leisure battery. So there wasn't anything else, no other smarts or anything like that uh, in that regard. Uh, what uh, sometimes what you have to do is if there's a display unit and you have the voltage of the engine battery uh, shown on the display unit, then potentially you need to uh, actually put in a split, a relay to when the engine's running to cut the connection between the CBE unit and the engine battery. Uh, but it needs to be a five pin relay so that you are either drawing power from your leisure battery or from your engine battery. If you just cut the connection when the engine's running, potentially uh, you're not actually gonna charge your, run, run your fridge and things like that. So it's something that you have to be mindful of. In this instance, there was already a compressor fridge that ran off the leisure battery, and obviously when the engine's running, the leisure battery is charging, so that's all good. And uh, the wire going into the CBE unit from the engine was literally just to charge the leisure battery. So the easiest way for us to disable that was literally just to disconnect it and not uh, connect it back up again. And then obviously the leisure battery would then be charged by the DC to DC charger. So it was very easy, uh, simple to do, but obviously if, if the fridge was running off 12 volt when the vehicle was running, then you'd have to factor that in and put a, a relay to be able to cut that connection when the engine's running and then reconnect it when, the, when you're stationary so that you can still see like the engine voltage on the display and stuff like that. So yeah, in this instance, it was much easier to install, but sometimes you have to put that relay in. It's not that complicated, pretty straightforward. We've done it a bunch. You just have to find the D plus on that uh, CB unit as well, just to activate the relay. And that's us done on that install. Uh, pretty smooth. We basically just knocked that out in the morning, really. Uh, most complicated sort of time consuming bit was uh, putting the wire from the engine battery back to the back of the vehicle. That's always just super fiddly to do and to run it in a way that is safe and also uh, the best way because it's just a bit awkward sometimes going around things with the exhaust and all that sort of stuff down there. Uh, and also uh, trying to do it in the most cost effective way possible because obviously you could pull loads of the van apart and run it in certain places but then uh, potentially it's really not that effective and, and economical for people for somebody to spend a whole day just running one wire for a DC to DC charger. So we always just try and find a compromise sort of middle road in terms of safety and a good install versus uh, not costing too much. So yeah, that was a pretty good setup, full uh, 280 amp hour off-grid lithium battery with a uh, Victron uh, MPPT smart controller, DC to DC charger, and mains charger. So uh, the customer has a banging system in that little van. It's going to be pretty awesome. And with that capacity of battery, he could go off grid for a long time, especially with a bit of solar to top things up and all that sort of stuff. He's uh, now going to look at an inverter to go into there. So yeah, pretty happy with that. Thanks folks for watching. Hopefully that's been interesting or informative for you and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Thank you.